so I'm really excited tonight because we're going to run back to 2005 and revisit the Carmel High School Band from Carmel, Indiana. Tonight we have Richard Saucedo, who is director of bands back in 2005 with Jeff Young, who is and was visual caption head uh, and two band members of that 2005 band, Chris Kaflick, who is a brass player and Danny Schweiger, who is a member of the Color Guard. How are you guys doing? Great. Thanks Great. for having us, Thanks. James. Uh, thank you, James. So, Richard, what do you remember about the 2005 season? And is it just blow your mind that that was like 15 years ago? Uh, it does, uh, because in some ways it does seem like 15 years ago, but in other ways it seems like just yesterday. Um, it was a very special year, obviously, um, not just because of the, the championship, but it was a special year because I think it was probably the closest, and I'm hoping my, my colleagues here and former students will agree, it was probably the closest that we had come uh, to putting a show on the field that we felt uh, was representative of what we're capable of um, as a staff and what our students were capable of. Um, the other thing that um, made me so happy is to think about not only the members, uh, the parents, and everybody that worked so hard, the staff, to make that happen, but also to think back uh, to the whole beginning of the Carmel program when I started there years before that, and think about all the kids, um, uh, members, many of who these other three that are with us tonight know very well, that uh, helped us to build the program. You know, it's always exciting to win, but. Like, uh, like any championship, I mean, most people will tell you that that feeling is kind of fleeting, uh, and then you get back to what really matters. You get back to how, uh, what the kids accomplished uh, and um, what the staff and parents and our administration and the whole Carmel community, you know, what everyone achieved together. Uh, and that's what I remember. That's what I'll always remember. We've got Chris Catholic. We've got uh, Danny Schweiger, who are both band members. Uh, in 2005 with that with that show that year but now I mean look what they're doing I'm currently the uh, one of the band directors at Brownsburg High School uh, just on the west side of Indianapolis um, I've been here for five years before that I was at Broken Arrow High School for three years and I was at Northrop High School for a year before that so since leaving Carmel I, I graduated from Carmel then went back and worked with the band and then have been has been I've been a band director ever since then so and this, this year that we're talking about was kind of like a pinnacle for me. Like, you know what, this is definitely what I want to do with my life is music education. No, and, and the kids at Brownsburg are, are so blessed to have you in front of them every day. And Danny, you're, you're still involved in the activity. Yes, I am. So um, my day-to-day uh, -day job is as an employee benefits and human capital consultant for Gregory and Appel Insurance here in downtown Indianapolis. Um, but outside of that, I've stayed really involved with the marching band community and with the drum corps community, um, as well as the WGI community. Um, I've worked with, uh, as a caption head with the Trooper of Drum and Bugle Corps. I've gotten to work um, actually as a uh, brass choreographer for the Crossmen, which was a great opportunity. I'll definitely credit um, the, the ecosystem at Carmel for helping me be able to understand how to do something like that. Um, I've gotten to work with the Carolina Crown with lots of local high schools. Carmel, obviously, right after I graduated, I went back and taught band camp that same summer um, and then went on to work with Greenfield High School, Center Grove High School, um, a lot of different schools across the country, too, on a consulting basis. So um, actually, the last school I worked with was Lake Hamilton High School out of Arkansas. Really, really great people. I've been working with them for about 10 years. Um, so yeah, I've gotten to stay connected and involved and it's still, still a big part of my life. Yeah. John Schultz and friends. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Danny, you said, uh, the ecosystem at Carmel, because it's like, you know, there are Carmel folks all over the planet now, but it's like, they, they, they still stay connected. And, and I think that that's, what's cool tonight about being able to watch this 2005 show, you know, apart, but connected. And so what are, what are some of, you know, just any of you, some of the things that you remember most about just constructing this show, I guess. I really loved Mike McIntosh's contribution. Uh, in addition to Richard Saucedo, it's just the, the, the soundscape of different symbols that we use during the show, I thought really made it. And it was a, the first time we've ever really done a, like an extended period of time on the field where it was 
it was just symbols. You know, it wasn't something that you'd seen before um, or that we hadn't done before. And it really, um, with the, we had just brought on Michael Gaines uh, as well to do drill and the combination of Mike McIntosh and Michael Gaines was, and Richard Sacedo's writing was out of this world. Another thing that I remember fondly of that year is the first year in our new uniform, which has been our look ever since. Um, and uh, will continue to be our look into the near future. We, we, we love having that identity and uh, everyone recognizes it. Um, it's a Michael Cesario design from Fred J. Miller. And uh, when we came on the field for the first time that year, we looked and carried ourselves differently for sure. And just so everyone knows, um, Jeff Young is pretty much the person that designed that uniform. So he had a lot of say so in it. And um, we pretty much didn't make any uh, uniform decisions back there, back then without getting Jeff's okay. So, <laughs> Otherwise we'd end up with white pants again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, knew, he knew not to ask the old man. Yeah. So we, we trusted Jeff and it's a good thing that we did. I remember that being kind of like a controversy a little bit too. Like when we unveiled that uniform to the parents, they were like, wait, where are the white pants? Like this is yeah, like, it's a normal thing to wear white pants. Why are we not wearing white pants? A great story with that uniform too is when we first got the uh, the sample uniform from Fred J. Miller, Chris Catholic was the one who who was the right size, and it looked so good on him that we I walked him into the principal's office. He was in the middle of a meeting, and I was like, "I'm sorry, Mr. Williams, but you got to see this." And like all the assistant principals got up and they were smiling and clapping, and uh, that was a really fond memory. So that's that was, when Chris first started being a model then. <laughs> yeah and and the guard uniform that year was incredible too danny yes. can you speak to that a little bit i do remember it had the 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 harness like climbing kind of harness yeah like yeah well i remember um when we first saw the costumes and they had this harness on we were all kind of like mm. it was a black harness that went down both shoulders and around the center and it had um o-rings or whatever those are called on the belt and it, it that was before we understood that part of the part of the show was going to be some of us actually getting suspended in these triangular props and flipping around in the air. So no one really understood what was happening until that component sort of got explained. And it was briefly after that, it was a few days after that. Um, and I do remember when it was being explained, I personally have a fear of heights and I also personally am not a great inverter. I don't do well upside down. And I remember thinking, oh gosh, I hope I'm not one of those people. Well, sure enough. Uh, <laughs> I was, and so <laughs> I had to get over that whole fear pretty quickly. Um, and actually another funny story about those props. Um, after my dad saw them, he immediately volunteered to be on prop crew because he wanted to make sure that they were being properly assembled before shows. He was like, if my kid's gonna be doing this, I guess I'm coming with every weekend so that we can make sure that these are safely set up. Yeah, definitely a unique experience because we were just being asked to do things that you, you don't have any knowledge of. Like, unless you were a gymnast, how do you know how to invert like that? How do you know how to do those things? And so the other thing that we did that year that was really interesting is I remember there were color guard members playing symbols that were mounted on those props. And again, I mean, it was such a unique year because we're being asked as high school students to do these things that we've never been asked to do at a really high level. And I, I carry that skill with me to this day when you walk into a situation and someone says, hey, can you do this? And it's like, well, I've never done it before, but I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be able to do that well. Yeah, Danny, I don't know if I ever told you guys back then, but I may have gotten one or a hundred calls or emails <laughs> from parents saying, you know, we trust you guys, but are you kidding me? Right. Uh, when they found out that the girls were gonna be hanging <laughs> on mm -hmm. those ropes. So uh, luckily we pulled it off and uh, everyone's still around to talk about it. Right. I think my favorite part of that prop was when you attached the rifle to it and spun it out yes. into the thin that air. Was awesome. That was really cool. Yeah. 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 We wanted to be different and we had such great creative staff people, uh, you know, Rosie Queen and, and Michael Gaines and those kind of people, just such creative people. And um, we just basically said, let's go for it, you know, and um, let's see what you guys come up with. And when they did, I kind of swallowed really hard and said, um, 
Sure, <laughs> whatever you guys yeah. think. Uh, and you know, if you three of you remember, it did take us pretty much the whole season uh, before we got it worked out. And even on finals night, we were all standing there with our fingers crossed, like making sure it's going to work. And, and luckily it did. And we had such great performers in those kids. And um, it was really just a magical year. For those of you that don't know, I mean, this show is, I mean, it's just very athletic. You know, you see the color guard in the costuming that they're talking about, these triangular fixtures. If I'm not mistaken, there's at one point like old school, like majorette moment in there, in there too. I mean, it's just like a little bit of everything for everybody. Well, the twirler part of it is just, uh, you know, we usually don't have a twirler in our show, like a lot of Big Ten schools do, but that girl was so talented that Rosie was like, we're going to put her in the show uh, no matter what. You know, we're not going to make her learn how to do rifle because this is what she's really good at. And I thought that was a really neat opportunity for her. And I think she ended up being like the main twirler at UT Austin. Like she ended up being a rock star in college too. So the yeah. Life or dodge. Yep. Yeah. The thing that's cool about Carmel is it's just always been about excellence. It's always been about the kids and the staff working together to create something different. Um, and the three representatives that I have with me tonight are the best examples of that. They're, you know, they're not just uh, great workers and they're not just committed to or were committed to Carmel, but they're committed to excellence in life. And um, every time that Carmel goes on the field, um, there are thousands of kids who have gone through the program who are always watching and always um, feeling that in their hearts. Richard, thank you for being with us. Jeff Young, Chris Catholic, Danny Schweiger. Uh, looking forward to just uh, rebroadcasting uh, suspended symbols from November 12th, 2005. So uh, looking forward to seeing that again tonight. And thank you guys so much for uh, being with us a little bit here. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Appreciate it.